Hello everyone, thanks for strolling on over. I'm Evan Abrams, and today we're gonna to take our first baby steps into walk cycles. In this video, we're gonna look at a method for making walk cycles outlined in the Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams. We'll be using a specific IK plugin, but you can do this with just about any IK solution. And the principles we talk about here can be applied to FK rigs as well, or even non-rigged things. Really, these methods are being adapted from traditional animation, where each frame is drawn with your hands. So my hope is that this will give you a method that you can adapt to start making walk cycles and understanding more about how character animation works in general. So let's uh, move on and hop to it. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. If you're looking to learn about animation, they've got plenty of courses on that, as well as design, photography, illustration, film, all great classes taught by experts at the top of their craft. Experts like Fraser Davidson. If you are here to learn about walk cycles, might I suggest his course on character animation in general. He goes through a workflow from designing to rigging and animating across Illustrator and After Effects. I think he really makes some charming characters, so please do check that out. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And now when you join, you can try one of Skillshare's new live classes. Experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can start exploring your creativity with Skillshare. To start off, I'm gonna be using a lot of Limber in this tutorial. Limber is a third-party plugin that provides IK control of limbs that it can generate out of simple shape layers. We'll be moving these handles around and parenting them to other layers or parenting other layers to them, so we'll have fewer things to move in order to get this character into the poses we need. So if you wanna follow along and use this character, they are available for download at pay what you like pricing using the link in the description of the cards. If you wanna set yours up from scratch to be like mine, I'll show you how it's all rigged up. If not, please skip ahead. There are chapter markers in the description to make that process easier. I've used simple circles for the hips and shoulders. The shoulders are parented to the hips because as the hips move, so goes everything else. Looking at the leg controllers, the hip attachment here is parented to that hip layer. Then I can move the hip layer around and the legs move with it. That makes sense. The ankles though float freely, but I've parented these little rounded off triangles to them to uh, make feet. And just a reminder here, I'm not much of an illustrator and this is for learning purposes. So I wanted these to be kind of basic shapes and proportions of like an average kind of person. Moving Moving up to the arms, we have a similar relationship to the shoulders with attachments parented and with a hand swinging free. The head is parented to the shoulders. Then we have another layer that is parented to the hips, but extends shapes up to the shoulders. So I can control it all with shoulders, hips, hands, and feet. Again, this is all using limber, so this may be unique to limber, but I've taken off the rotation of the ankle controller. So I can control it independent of its rotation. And I've parented the feet to the ankle controller, so of course the feet stay attached to the legs as they move, but that foot can pivot freely. So first steps, when addressing walk cycles, I wanna start with a simple primer here. We're gonna be making a sequence of images that will provide the illusion the character is moving forward. If we were gonna have our character take a whole one step per second, maybe that means we need eight frames per second to convey that. Or maybe we can do it with only four frames per second. Maybe we can even do it with two. Or maybe on the other side, 16 is better, or maybe 24. Because we're only trying to trick the audience into believing that we're doing a thing, we just need to consider what specific images we need to put into a sequence to show this movement. In traditional animation, we often see this done uh, at eight frames a second or on threes, but we're gonna be setting keyframes on properties in a comp that is 24 frames per second. So the way we conceive of motion is a little bit different. Working in this tutorial, I'm going to set up so that we have 16 images as we go from one foot to the other. And then another 16 frames would bring us right back to the starting position. Just remember when we're talking about number of frames or durations, it's all relative, it's all descriptive, it's not perscriptive. So please keep in mind that as we move forward, the patterns of movement, the process and the technique is more important than any specific frame count or rigid recipe here. Richard Williams describes a method beginning with setting the contact poses. This is the moment when the foot contacts the ground. I'm gonna adjust the ankle, the foot, and the hip to make that pose. Of special interest here is the extension of the front foot as it stretches out to meet the ground plane. The heel is down, the toes are up. I'm gonna push the hip forward as well, giving the impression the hips are not square, but they're pivoting forward. The back hip is therefore 
as far back as the front hip is forward. And the back foot is up on the ball of the foot on the ground, ready to move ahead, ready to spring ahead. It's much easier to start with getting the legs doing what we want and then go ahead and add the rest of the movements. So the properties we're keying here are the hip control, the ankle control position, as well as the ankle rotation. Now this is just one leg forward. We need to get the reverse leg forward as well. So we can do this by copying keyframes and moving to the new frame and pasting the property on the opposite leg from the left to the right, from the right to the left. When I toggle between the frames, you can see it's just switching back and forth. Contact, 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 contact. Then I'm going to copy and paste these keyframes twice more so that we have four contacts. We really only need three of them from left to right to left again, but I want more so I can remix this around easier by simply sliding the layers around. Now we need the pose that comes in between those. This is called the passing pose. Critically, the front leg comes into the middle. The hips are going up because we need this straight leg, meaning you're gonna to need to keyframe the position of the hips going up. This should be slightly higher than the contact, which is kind of the middle of the hips vertical travel. It can help to separate the dimensions of the hips position so that you only have to worry about the vertical change. The back leg is coming up to pass while all of the weight is on that straight leg and the ankles need new rotations too. We take these properties and we do the same thing as we did before. We, we flip flop to make the mirror pose on the other passing leg. So now we have contact, pass, contact, pass. It's really starting to come together here. <laughs> this actually looks like it's something. Before we move on, we want to make sure that we stretch these keyframes out a little bit. Like I said in the intro, the contacts are going to be 16 frames apart. So then we're going to move the passes to be halfway between those. That would be eight frames. We're going to put some keyframes in between those. First, let's do what's called the down pose when the weight is being taken into the front leg at its most extremes would be like a front lunge. We're going to do this by dropping the hips down. We're going to flatten the foot down to the ground plane. And that may actually be all we need. You might want to touch up the position of the rear leg and the ankle to be more natural or controlled as well. And we'll need again to do the reverse. So copying and pasting from left to right right to left, but we want this down pose so it seems like the weight is sinking down into the step. And then we're going to get the up pose. So if the down is the lowest point of the hips, then the up is actually the highest point that the hips achieve. We may need to adjust the knee here, driving ahead. That leg is about to seek the ground for its upcoming contact pose. The front leg has passed and is about to bend, but the toes need to stay in contact to the ground. It's not lift off time yet. And now we have our poses. Contact, down, pass, up contact down, pass, and repeat, repeat, repeat. The computer here is doing a lot of the lifting. So we've got all these keyframes and it's creating the tweens in between, obviously. What we want to do is try to add some smoothness to fix things up. So first I'm going to go to the hips. There should be kind of a gentle sine wave up and down. We really only need keyframes on the upmost and the downmost position, and then we can smooth those out. So let's have a look at the graph editor here. This should be smooth, but because of our manual clunking along, it's not as good as it could be. I'm going to just remove the keys from the passing and contact phases, and then I'm going to easy ease what remains. The fewer keyframes we have, the smoother smoother things are going to be. So now the hips are making this nice even sine wave as they move up and down. Notice we don't have to set any keyframes on those hip controllers either. So those are pretty good. Maybe I'll just ease those so that hip switching is a little bit easier. A lot of your walk cycles attributes and the feel of it are going to come from making these tweaks. While we're thinking about the hips, I want to show you something interesting here. This is a fairly even walk, but if we simply take the hips and move them forward, look how much more purposeful the walk seems. And then how about if I take the hips and I move them backwards? How does that feel different? We're lucky with this IK system that we can change some individual components and have these changes kind of propagate throughout the rest of the system without needing to redraw the rest of the frames that have all these changes. I'm just going to undo that. But another thing I wanted to show you here is that we can offset these layers. I said a few steps ago that I'm making sort of more poses than I need. Now I'm really easily able to slide the layers back and forth. So if I want the hips to move first and then the ankles to move, I can just offset the keys by sliding the layers that way. Setting keyframes off like this can make this feel more fluid and organic and more human. And it's an easy way to add a bit of personality to your walk as well. I won't get into things like double bouncing or a strut or like a jaunty step. This video is just to cover the basics. We can get into more advanced things later. With the legs doing their thing, it's now easier to get the rest of the body working the way we want. I'm going to start with twisting the shoulders going opposite to the hips. So as the closer hip controller moves forward, like the left hip is 
getting ahead, I'm going to pull the closer shoulder controller back. Then we're going to keyframe the opposite reaction as well, and then we'll copy and paste those changes down the line and across to the other shoulder. Now we come to the arm swing. Richard Williams suggests that the widest pose for the arm swing is the down pose. So working off of that, I'll do the closer arm first, swinging from the down pose to the other down pose and adjusting the motion path with the convert vertex tool. These should be eased, of course, because they are swinging objects. And you may even consider parenting the wrist controller to the shoulder controller. Doing so will make the arms more rigid and realistic, but keeping them free will let you have more stretch and play with the limbs. Now at this point, the rest of it's all refinements. Easing, little tweak there, little nudge here, getting things into the specific alignment you want for each pose, and working the motion paths and keyframe eases so you can get it just so. It can be quite a process of refinement, so let's skip ahead to the next kind of technical bit you might do. We probably want to see this person walk somewhere, right? And please keep in mind, we're not going to talk about coming to a stop or going from walking to running. That's going to be another video. Let's just get one foot in front of the other first. I'm going to start, though, by dropping a couple markers on this comp's timeline at the left contact and then the next left contact. So if we looped these markers, we would have step, step. Looks good to me. When I drop this walk cycle precomp into another composition, those markers are going to be there too. So I'll do just that. I will then enable time remapping for this layer. Then we're going to set keys at those marks that I made and delete the included keys. Now I shall simply use the loop out cycle, the default mode of the loop out to make this loop forever. Now we've got them walking in place. Very nice. If we want them to move ahead, we need them to move at the right speed. So I bring the playhead to the contact pose. I set a keyframe on the position of this comp. I'm also going to drop a guide down so I know where that heel is, where it's stuck to the ground, where it strikes. Then I'm going to move ahead in time to the next contact point when this foot is about to leave the ground. Now I'm going to move the layer to the correct spot as indicated by that guide. It's here to help me kind of get the distance down. And then finally, I'm going to use another loop out, but this time use the continue argument so that the layer will simply continue moving in the direction and speed that these two keyframes are indicating. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, you can get close and you may need to do some bumping and smoothing to get it perfect, but usually there are going to be other things going on in the scene, so it's not going to be hyper noticeable. You might also need to work this backwards to move the world around the character. So if we're going to leave this comp alone, undo, 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 they're just going to walk in place. And then I'll put a layer here under the character that I want to move its position. We use a similar method of lining up where the ground should shift to and then simply continuing the motion using that loop out continue. Well, I hope you walk away from this tutorial with a firm foundation in this particular technique, but it's really just one way of doing it. You might want to instead work from passing pose to passing pose. Uh, you might want to straight ahead this thing. You might want to do something entirely different. However, I'm always going to highly recommend the Animator's Survival Kit just as a book, as a reference. Uh, it's not in print everywhere, and it can be hard to find depending on where you live. But if you can and you enjoy books, this is a great one. That'll do it for me. I better walk on. Thank you so much for watching. If you like learning this kind of thing, do let me know. Give this a like. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future tutorials on this channel. New things are coming out here all the time. If you like this kind of thing, but live.